Hello, you guys, and welcome to the Woman's Cave because it's my turn. I'd like to proudly announce that we have had a peace treaty. Yes. Long about, yes. The champagne feud is over. Yeah. It's a cease. It's a cease fire. On the champagne. Yes. And in fact, in between interviews, I went and went, put the champagne in the refrigerator for Winona. I know. Because I was having, because, you know, the person that's on was awesome, and I was like, get champagne. So we went out earlier today to get champagne, just to celebrate the fact that, you know, our guest is I love how you said, like, we went out earlier to get the champagne. Yeah, we went out to the car with a stash. (laughs) 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 We had a stash in the the garage, and we were like, "Mm, no, not that one. So we went to the car. And the trunk, though, because, I mean, it's a pandemic, so no one's really going anywhere. Where are you driving to? Nowhere but the grocery store, like, every two to three weeks. So you're not really going nowhere. Leave it in the car. Exactly. I'm Jake. And I'm Ebola. Oh, Ebola elbow. Absolutely. absolutely. Or maybe we should call it something else now. Well, that's what they technically call it, so I just call it what they call it. The Ebola elbow. They said, do the Ebola elbow, and I'm doing air quotes because that's what is quoted, like, directly. It might be from the CDC or, you know, some random, I think, or CNN, or whatever. I read it on the Internet, so it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have literary life, guys, because I'm being semi-professional. Yes, with pop poetry. I'm actually being professional, y'all. With, with pop poetry, a.k.a. our books. And we wrote, and I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons, available on audible.com, um, bondanova.com, and, and Amazon. Yo, know, I see this so many times, and I still mess it up. Like, I, I guess I don't like money. And we also have And I Thought Being Grown Up was easy. It'll be available soon. I know we've been promising it for two years, but I got a you actual can't. committal date. At the end of June, we will have a audio book. You cannot, like, if you're thinking about buying it, skip it. Just skip it and get the audio book. Because you know what? Joe jo is amazing, and she's a genius, and you just can't rest genius. You can't do it. You can't exactly. do it. I mean, you can, but then you come out with, like, slightly less genius, and nobody wants that. And then your you can, favorite book. Yes, my favorite book, And I Thought I Did My Journey Alone, the all poetry book. And then you can check out The Misfit Guides, all available on Amazon.com. And then you can maybe, if y'all just like the all poetry, hop on over to BarnesandNoble.com and pick up If Only I Were Me. I'm Alona, and I am the the author of the Widow's Debt series and Foreign Coffee, the not-so-romantic romantic book that is an audio book. Please buy it. Also, I like how she now says her name twice. The narcissist is showing. I just needed to point that out. And we are the co-founders of the 25 Hottest Indie Authors, Artists, and Advocate magazine. Find all that your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. That's so not enough about us. Woo! That was a lot about us. Now, y'all aren't here to hear about us, though. You're here to hear for my wonderful guest. Wonderful guest. Would you wow. please like to introduce yourself? I had to do it. I'm sorry. I'm yes, the last did, word before she, she speaks. She did. Uh, well, thank you so much for having having me on. I am Gina Fattori, and I am a television writer who's worked on many, many, many shows, but I'm also the author of my very first book, um, which is called The Spinster Diaries, and it is available, like your books, from barnesandnoble.com. It's also available on Audible. Um, it was released in April, so I'm very excited about that, and uh you know, a little uh, sad that we're not making TV shows anymore in the current world, but, you know, TV shows, but we're watching them a lot, which is good. Yes, we are, and I just wanted to put in a little, like, we tried to do this interview before, and my dad was in the car, we went to, like, we, we got a mix up, and I went to go pick up my groceries, and my dad was in the car, and she said, the Fences Diaries, and my dad, because he's old, he, like, pulled out his, his like, his uh, notebook that he just keeps with him because he's old, and his pen and wrote it down. He's like, that seems like a funny book. I can't wait to read it. I'm going to buy so, it um, as soon as we go home. We have a copy of the spin It's coming to us. <laughs> yes, because my, my dad was like, I'm going to read that. That seems hilarious. And he's like, when you have her back on, ask some more questions about the spin So, he had a list. for my father's request, <laughs> questions about the spin that is actually wonderful to hear because it is, in fact, meant to be funny. It's it's a short book, and uh, it really is uh, meant to just be funny and sort of take you away from the present uh, moment in time. And um, I actually started my career way, way back. I was working on comedy shows, and I really wanted to write comedy. But early on in my TV writing career, I got jobs on, well, I got this job on Dawson's Creek. And 
you know, you're not going to say no to a job when you get a job and it's a great job like that. So I ended up writing a lot more drama and serious things. And so when I thought about writing a book, I just thought I, that's what I really want to try to do is write something funny. So that was my goal. Well, there you go. So, yes. so that, that's the one question. And then, wait, my, it's my dad's questions. I can't go. He might take away my set if I don't ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll just have a curtain. <laughs> yeah, then we'll just have a curtain. So, <laughs> second question. So, the second question was, so what inspired you to write the Spencer Diaries? Because, you know, Spencer is kind of like a bad word a little bit in the English language. So why would you name it that and what, what made you do it? Yeah, sounds like you're a dad. Doesn't it? I have to ask, though. He's going to be watching. It is, a, it is a very good question. Spinster is a word that for years has been used in a derogatory sense to describe women who never marry. And um, so my book is about, uh, part of it is set in the present day, and it's about me being a TV writer. But part of it is about this woman from the 18th century, which is a time when they would use the word spinster much more frequently, who was also, she was a writer herself. And uh, a young female writer who published her first book when she was 26, which back then in, in like, this is like the 1770s, 1780s in, in England, it was very uncommon for women to be given any kind of education at all, even women who were wealthy and upper class. And uh, she was sort of a middle class kind of a person. Her dad was a music teacher. And, and uh, so that was where she, you know, learned a lot about the world. And he was a writer also. Um, but so the book is really the story about her living in that time, but also a story about me living in the present day because I'm I'll, I'll, also I am not married and I do consider myself a spinster. I think it's a funny word and, you know, I just sort of reclaimed it at a certain point. I was like, if this is what, if the world thinks this is a problem that I'm not married, then you know what? I don't accept that. Like, I'm going to have to just live my life on my own terms. Okay. Yeah, is that no, the end of no that, that's the end of Dad's question. I have a question. So now <laughs> I'm done. Real. I'm done. It's, it's real. Because you know, I need to check in with her now. It's part of the peace, the peace treaty of this of the Champagne Wars. <laughs> need to check in. We're good. It's a real question. Okay. So I know, like going, and I've been, listened to podcasts before, and they're saying that when you're doing TV writing and you're pitching to be in a writer's room, sometimes or in a writer's program, you send in a, a script that is in the voice of the TV program that you'd like to write on. And so they get stuck writing a lot in somebody else's voice. How was, was it hard for you to find your own voice and then put it on paper? Like, just be you? Because I know in a writer's room there's more than one writer. So how did you deal with those two challenges? That's a very good question. Yes, I, uh, when you're working on a show, the old, your goal is to write in the voice of the show and to, to be really clear and consistent about who those characters are. And I think for me, I, what I realized was that my voice was really the voice that I had in my early 20s when I was just starting out with writing. And back then I lived in Chicago. I worked at this weekly newspaper, which is called the Chicago Reader. It still exists in a way, but um, it was like the free weekly newspaper. I, I mean, you know, there used to be so many of those and we don't have so many anymore. But um, I used to write this newsletter. It was like, I would just send it to my friends and I would Xerox it on the copier in the office, like for free. Um, and uh, I would just send it out to people. And I think that was me just writing what I wanted to write, you know, before I was a professional writer, professional television writer, writing for money and for, you know, for your boss, basically, which is really the job that they are paying you to do. So um, I think when I started writing my book, I didn't, it was hard. Your question is really astute. It was hard, but eventually I just realized I have to go back to what I was thinking and doing before I moved to LA and started becoming a TV writer. <laughs> what made you do that? Mm -hmm. Going from um, newspaper to screenwriting? It, it is the craziest story, but um, it's uh, it's sort of a Cinderella story in a weird way. Um, I'd always wanted to be a writer from the time I was like 10, really 10 or 11 years old. I had been writing and, you know, my best friend and I went to the Young Authors Conference when we were like 11. And um, I worked at the school newspaper, you know, when I was in high school, I worked at the yearbook in the newspaper. And so I was always writing. And um, when I was working at the newspaper, I was, you know, whatever, I was like 27 then. 
And um, I got a phone call one day from this woman who I had worked for when I was 22. She was my first boss after I graduated from college. You know, when you kind of just need a job and you hope that it will be a good one. And um, I worked at the New York Public Library, like the actually the main big giant library in New York right there on 42nd Street and Fifth Avenue in the fundraising office. And the woman I worked for, she was just lovely, lovely woman. Her name was Judy Daniels. And, you know, I guess she sort of saw something in me. And I stayed in touch with her for all the years after I worked for her. Um, I would always send her my newsletter that I would write and she would send it to her son. And her son is a television writer. So essentially she called me up, you know, when I was 27 and she said, my son gets to hire an assistant. And I think that you should move to LA and you should work for him and he should help you be a TV writer. And it's really, it's a weird story kind of about the power of moms. Like, you know, really a mom making a recommendation to her son is what got me that job. I mean, he didn't have to hire me. He probably had to interview me because his mom was saying, you should meet Gina. Um, but he offered me the job and I moved out to LA and the show that, that he created was King of the Hill. And uh, yeah, so his name is Greg Daniels. He's like a really, really huge TV writer. He created King of the Hill. He also created the American version of The Office and he created Parks and Rec. And um, yeah, he's my wow. mentor. <laughs> Oh, you can know Greg Daniels. I know that's amazing, first of all. Okay, I need that's champagne now. Pause interview, champagne now. No, <laughs> no, there's no champagne now. We're in the middle of an interview. Yes, you said you were going to be professional. Oh, I did, shoot. And I just you used did. up my one silly question. You did. You did, so. Wait, oh. do I get a narcissistic it's question? It's over. It's oh. over now. I was going to say, yes, yes it is. It's the power of moms. Like, moms make you do things that you're like, I don't I don't think that fits my, oh, and then, like, Two years later, you're like, you know what? I hate her. How did she? Wrong <laughs> 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 <Fall> again. <laughs> so true. Well, no, no, go ahead. I know you have another question. It's a narcissistic question. No, skip that one. Get another one. Oh, okay. So of course, I have to ask the question about one of the reasons I'm so happy to have you on today. What was your favorite show to write on? that's I don't know if I can answer that because of the you know it's like you're supposed to love all of your children oh, okay let me so go she like loves this. All of my favorite show that you wrote on was the Gilmore Girls how was that <laughs> okay that's that's fair um that was an amazing opportunity because I worked on the very last year of the Gilmore Girls which is kind of the season that the fans didn't like so much um but when you're working on the show at the end of the show it's a really big responsibility. You have to think about these characters, what's the journey they've been on, what's gonna be satisfying for them, you know, at the end of the road. And, um, and it's just such a beloved show. And so really the most exciting part about it was um, how the fans react when I meet fans of the show. They know more about the show than I do almost because they all love it so much. So yeah, it was, it was amazing experience. Can I get another one? No, I have a question. Okay. So, I mean, I know that in a writer's room, I know, I, I think I watched a documentary, but they have different storyboards. But how do you do your storyboard for your book? And how was it different? Ooh, that, okay, that's very interesting. Like, there are many different TV shows have different systems. Um, but we do usually use, a, like, a, a whiteboard where we're trying to, you know, put the story up there. I actually have come to use note cards over the years, which many screenwriters use note cards because a note card will represent a scene. And, and if you have each note card representing a scene, then what you have to write on the note card is what's the essence of that scene that you're eventually going to film? Is it, you know, Rory and Lorelai are walking, you know, they're walking into Luke's and they sit down and have coffee and what do they talk about? And if you put that on a note card, you know what that scene is. And you can also move the cards around. So you can say, oh, what if we do this first? Like, what if we, you know, uh, start with Rory and then later we go to Luke's diner, you know, 
what if we go to school first? What if we, so you can move the cards around. And I've just gotten used to that kind of structure. So when I wrote my book, I really just actually kind of just wrote the book without thinking about structure, which will be obvious to anyone who reads the book. But at a certain point I did go through and I created note cards for the book. Cause then I realized if I put them on my bulletin board, I can see what each chapter is and I can see how it's moving the story forward and how it's functioning. And um, is the pace right? Like, oh, is this story point, you know, is this in the fourth column? And maybe I'd be happier if this was in the third column because it would be moving a little faster story-wise. So there's a lot of tricks that I've learned from TV writing that I did use when I was writing my book. So when do you think you're gonna be the showrunner for the Spinster Diaries? <laughs> Can that I have a good, that's a very good notice. question. I mean, it would be you a would. dream. It would be a dream yeah. to be able to take my book and make it into a show or a movie. Um, but, you know, right now is a weird time. We're waiting, you know, all of Hollywood is kind of on hold, on pause. Um, but it would be great if it worked out. But also if it didn't, I know that I wrote the book just really for myself to, in order to have this creative outlet that I didn't get with my work, you know, which we all, anybody who has a day job and their poetry or their art or their painting or their cooking or anything they also love, you know, you have to balance those two things. So I did it for that reason. And, and it thrills me that now other people can actually read it and enjoy it. But if it hadn't worked out that it got published, you know, I would have still been proud of myself for doing it. Absolutely. I'm proud of you, and I haven't even read it yet. I, I know. Well, I'm just waiting for my dad's copy because <laughs> he's gonna fall asleep like on his knee, and then I'm just gonna like slowly slide it off. And we, <laughs> you know I, mean? I, I, I can send you guys a copy. This is crazy. I can, I'll, I can get, I can get you guys one. Just send me your address. <laughs> That was that was just so funny with me. I have to get this book. It sounds insanely hilarious. I, I need to read it. I was like, okay, Dad, sure, absolutely. We'll buy it on Amazon today. We will, we will. <laughs> and so um, one of my last questions I want to ask you is what are the top three things of advice that you would have for any new author trying to make it? Or screenwriter. Okay, why? That, that's trying to make it. That wasn't my question. Oh. My question was awesome. Say it. <laughs> um, well, okay, so three, top three. I, for, I could do both pieces of advice, I guess. I mean, they're kind of the same. For authors, this is my first time publishing a book. So I, yeah, I would say, oh man, what is my advice? I mean, in terms of writing the book, my advice would be to never stop thinking about what you want the book to be because the hardest thing is, you know, people will say, even if you get to the point where you have agents who are reading your query letter and rejecting you, or you get to other points, people will always try to say what they think the book is. And it's fine to listen to what people have to say, but you have to know what you think before they start coming at you with all of these opinions and thoughts. So for me, I would say that was, the best thing I learned from actually writing the book was like how much I had to be clear in my own mind of what I wanted the, the book to be. And, uh, and then yes, show it to people, be brave, show your work to people. That works for screenwriting and for the other kind of writing, which is show it to people, have people give you their feedback. It's hard sometimes because you feel like you're being criticized. <laughs> but um, honestly, even sometimes just, maybe this is my third piece of advice that applies to both kinds of writing. You know, think of it as feedback and not criticism. And every time you hear that, you know, take it in and say, okay, this is something this person felt when they were reading this especially true with scripts, and then ask myself, why did they feel that? Like in screenwriting, we'll often talk about what's the note behind the note? Like what made the person reading the screenplay ask you that question or be confused or stop reading? You know, and, and then you have to ask yourself those questions about your own writing and really dig deep. Thank you so much. Those are wonderful yes, they are. advice. And then, I'm taking it to heart. I'm not going to lie. And then the last question is, where can people find your book and uh, like more about you? 
Oh my gosh. Well, okay. First of all, I have a website, which is my name, Gina Um, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to Google that and find me. Um, and my book, there's a picture of my book up there and information about my book. There's also information about my TV resume and, um, also all the articles that I've published because as I mentioned, I worked at a newspaper in my twenties. And so I wanted to sort of save and record all the different pieces of journalism and essays and criticisms and things that I had written. So that's all also on my website. And the book is available from uh, Amazon, barnesandnoble.com, uh, Audible, you can get the audio book. Um, and also there's a great new site called bookshop.org where you can buy a book, uh, and sort of from your local bookseller. Like if there's a local bookstore near you, they can help you find that local bookstore. So we should have got your dad's book from bookshop.org. Now I feel bad. <laughs> well, we're all it's learning. Happening. It's the time yeah, when we're all happening. learning every day. It's true. I mean, normally I go into the local bookstore, you know, like I go into the little mom and pop one, but I mean, yeah. everything is closed. So <laughs> it's just the internet now. The internet's open. <laughs> The internet's open <laughs> and there's champagne in the car. So that's exciting. Right. I'm going to keep mine in the car from now on. That's a good storage <laughs> system. Hey, well, you keep it in the car because you don't want it. Like, you want to be like, oh, it's great. Let's open it. And you're like, no. You see? Self-control. So you keep it right. in the car. Right. Start champagne. You started the champagne run. <laughs> yeah, you started it. So thank you so much for coming back on. I really appreciate it. Please check you made out. my whole day. He has. Please check out her book, uh, Spencer <laughs> Diaries, um, on Amazon.com or Barnes and Noble or, or Audible. Bookshop.org. Oh, Bookshop.org. Because yeah. especially that one. All right. <laughs> you gonna be professional? You gonna say it? No. I pause. Oh. oh. So you can check out. No, everything. no. You you were gonna say Jade, and you're gonna wrap us up. Oh yeah, Jade. Are you gonna wrap us okay. up? Okay. Here we go. You said you wanted to say it. See, we're trying this back and forth, and that's not it's working. Not we're going to have to go back to the champagne, champagne wars. wars. <laughs> we're going to have to go back to it. All right. But you can find out everything that your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com while you're there. Take a moment. Go to the ladies tab. Go to the middle and see the charities that we probably support. Yes, we know the times are hard, and not everyone has money, and that is okay because you can maybe volunteer some of your time, or maybe you have – just some clothes laying around that you want to get rid of because you don't want to clean up because you're stuck in your house? Maybe that also. And thank you in advance. It's a win-win situation for everyone. With that in mind, remember that wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys. One more note off. And Jade, bye-bye. <laughs>